Um, I really, I, I really don't know if I have a favorite day at the gym. Um, I would have to say, well, everybody would say chess, but it's really chess. Like that's my favorite. You know what I mean? I know Monday is National Chess Day, but now I'm getting out of the habit of training my chest on Mondays, and I really start to hit my chest on maybe like Thursdays. I want to love. I want to learn how to love legs. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting to the point where I can do my legs a lot. Where I can do them, where I'm trying to hit them at least twice a week, and that's one of those body parts where I've neglected legs and calves, you know what I mean? Where I train them, but I really don't hit them as intense as I would chest, you know what I mean? So I'm at the point now where I want to bring up all my weak points, where I really want to uh, bring out body parts that I know, at least shoulders and legs are like two areas that I really want to bring up. Um, as far as favorite exercises, I would have to go with. Um, of course, you know, people say bench press, but I love the uh, stiff leg deadlift. You know, I just love the way it challenges you. It gives you a nice stretch in the glutes and hams. And once you're doing it right, you're really using the glutes to contract versus using more of the lower back. You're using the glutes as a rotator for the hips to extend. And I just love that motion. I don't know, it's something about the stiff leg deadlift. As long as nobody's standing behind me, that's a little awkward. You know what I'm saying? Having like a dude stand behind you while you're doing stiff leg deadlifts, you know. But that's neither here or there. But I mean, I, I would have to go with, you know, I love the bench press. You know, I love uh, shoulder press. You know what I'm saying? I really love shoulder day when you can hit it intensely. Uh, me having a shoulder injury, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I can train my shoulder with a lot of volume. And it's not really bothering me. But a sh shoulders are really one thing I want to bring out. Like I've seen DLB. You know Dana Lynn Bailey's video and like her training with CT Fletcher where she just murdered shoulders really inspired me to go in and give 150% like in the gym you know you know what I'm saying then a lot of people would be like you know um, how are you training that hard you know how are you you got you know it all starts with nutrition there's no way I can go in there and work one to two hours on the body part and not eat right you know I'm, I'm going to feel it when I get there I'm going to be lethargic I'm going to be tired and my workouts are, are really going to suffer Any other favorites? Let me see, now that you asked that. I would have to say incline bench press. Um, I love incline bench press because I fell in love with that movement when I was in high school. You know what I mean? Like I played wide receiver and um, you know running routes and trying to get fast. One thing I had to get stronger to block corners and linebackers because I was playing the uh, slot receiver and I would always be lined up with like a linebacker and sometimes they would move me in as a tight end. So the incline bench press is something that I love just for the natural movement, you know, that pushing up at an, at an angle movement. Um, other than that, you know what I'm saying, as far as my favorites, um, I would say I like hammer, I love hammer strength uh, machines, even though you're not working your, your uh, stabilizers, I love the angle that it puts you in, I love that it's unilateral, and I love the fact that uh, if you do have an injury, like I say, that angle is good enough for you to actually work the muscle, and if you have one side that, you, that, that, that you're lagging, you're not really counterbalancing with that strong side um, overcompensating all the time. Um, I would also have to say back, I would say I love bent over rows. I love Riddell flies. Like I fall in love with those uh, Riddell flies and uh, high cable face pulls where you're using like the lap pull down machine but you're standing up and you're crossing and you're pulling it back. I, I, I love that. I love that movement. Three people that motivate me, I would have to say my pastor, my mother, and I would have to say um, one more. I had to say my grandfather. You know, I would have to start off with say my grandfather. He motivates me because as a child, you know, like being my grandfather, he really stepped in the role of being my father. So he was that grandfather. I seen him work, you know what I'm saying, all the time to provide for seven kids, you know. My mom being one and my aunts and uncles, you know what I'm saying, being good to my grandmother, you know, always making her laugh, you know, just showing me like what a father is really supposed to do, showing me what a husband is, is, is really supposed to do. And I appreciate that. He actually took time to get me into sports. So really, if it wasn't for him, I don't think I would be on his athletic side doing anything. Um, 
I would have to say my mother because my mother's a grinder and she's a lover. Like, you know, she loves God. Like, you know what I'm saying? She's the reason. She actually planted that seed in me to actually serve God, go to church, you know, and give my life over to Him. And she actually led by a, a example. She always prayed for me too. And that's, that's one thing that I always thank my mother for. Because it was a time where, you know, I really didn't know God for myself. And she actually, you know, prayed me through a lot of situations. A lot of hard times, a lot of struggles. So I really appreciate her for that. Um, another thing, uh, my pastor, like right now, you know, I have the privilege of serving or being, um, you know, a servant to uh, Bishop S.Y. Younger, Bishop Shante Younger of the Ramp Church. And um, it's just such an honor, you know, to have that privilege to be around somebody um, that God is using, like with that much wisdom and knowledge, you know. Uh, he is a grinder, you know, he's really about what he says. Behind the scenes, you know, he's really a, 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 a man of his word. He loves his people. And just being a great leader, you know, um, that's just what I want to be. You know what I mean? Like being a, being, being, really being about what I say and just having wisdom and encouraging people all the time. You know, um, he really took me in, called me son. And, you know, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Because um, you don't have a lot of people that you can really say, I look up to them that they are positive role models. And I really appreciate that. So those are the three people that I look up to, my pastor, my mother, and my grandfather, as far as being motivation in my life. What are my goals? Um, I would say one of my main goals is just to be successful. And, you know, there's many definitions of being successful. A lot of people figure, oh, I'm a millionaire, I'm successful, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to own, you know, many businesses, um, profiting businesses, you know, businesses that operate, that stay in the green, you know, where I can give back to my church, you know, businesses that, that operate where I can give back to my family, give back to the community. You know, just, um, I always want to be an entrepreneur and I want to put emphasis on that because, you know, a lot of businesses that I want to do, I probably haven't thought of yet. You know, of course I want to be, um, a successful personal trainer. I want to own some gyms, uh, maybe even a chain of gyms where you may see them in different states. Um, right now, I've already started a, a cleaning company. Uh, once everything's set, I'll, I'll get that out. Um, you know, I want to start a publishing company, get back into music where I can publish artists, a management company where I can manage artists. I mean, I have a lot of things that I want to do. You know, I'm just praying that God will provide me provision for my vision. You know, I'm just. Um, that's my goals, and as far as, you know, bodybuilding, I want to get into where I can actually look the best, like build the best version of myself. You know, that's really going to be my goals, like I said, to bring the lagging body parts out, tighten up on my nutrition and diet, um, even get, you know, a better job. You know, if, if I have to work until everything pops off, you know, I really want to get a better job, a more paying job. Um, I want to be a better leader, a better uh, husband, you know, a better parent. You know, I want to be a better son. You know, I just want to continue to get better. I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to grow spiritually. And one of my goals really in life, you know what I mean, is to patch up or not me do it, but allow God to patch up the relationship with my father, you know. And if, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Um, another goal of mine, uh, I want another vehicle. You know, I really want an SUV. Um, Leather down, maybe Denali, a suburban Tahoe. Uh, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think all the time. I think about goals all the time. But the number one goal is to run successful businesses. You know what I mean? Something that's going to bring money back. Something that's going to bring money back off of the investment that I put in. Um, so yeah, you know. And then having that freedom. One of my goals is to make money so I can have freedom to travel, I can have freedom to, you know, go to church more, I can have freedom to spend more time with my family. Well, I'm not always punching the clock and having to rely on somebody else to give me permission to do so. And I'm not always trading time for dollars, you know. Because in this life, it feels like, in this culture, everybody feels like, unless you're trading time for dollars, and what I mean by that is hitting the, um, you know, punching the clock. They feel like you can't make money. No one believes in themselves that much that if they have a vision to go after it, man. Like Steve Jobs had a vision, you know what I mean? Like Mark Zuckerberg had a vision. All these guys started somewhere, you know, Sean Puffy Combs had a vision. 
You know, Dr. Dre had a vision. Everybody had a vision. They invested time, they invested money, and they grind with their talent. So, I mean, I just want to be successful. Not even, you know, kind of throw off on the Drake song, but I just want to be successful. My advice for anyone that has goals trying to succeed in this life, um, don't listen to the haters, don't listen to the naysayers, and look, don't take advice from someone who's not doing anything. So, for example, if I'm working out five to six days a week, and I'm trying to develop a better body, I'm trying to develop a more sound me, I'm not going to take advice from someone saying I'm doing too much that goes to work and goes home and lays on the couch all day. It just doesn't work like that. You want to take advice from others that are doing the same thing that you are doing. Um, I would say also, just, just don't listen to the naysayers. Try to surround yourself with other people that are doing the same thing that you are doing. Um, try, to, try to find some mentors. Try to find people who have done it that can actually walk you through the process. Um, also, I would say, don't expect everybody to be a follower, to be a supporter of your vision. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes the ones that are closest to you will be the ones that will show you the less attention in, in your journey of trying to reach that goal. You know what I mean? So, a lot of times, like my pastor says, you have to release people from expectations. So, I wouldn't expect anyone to actually support you. I wouldn't expect anyone to actually be there. But, hey, if, if they do, so be it. And you don't have to tell everybody. You know what I mean? Like... You want to let your results and success do the talking while you do the talking privately. Like you talk to yourself, you map things out. Once you start seeing results, once money starts coming in, once you, your business starts growing, let that do the talking for you. But I would say just grind, you know what I'm saying? Always show others res respecting your journey, no, no cutthroat, because you know what goes around comes around. I would say be consistent. Write down your goals and revisit them, and that's important. Write down your goals, short term, long term, and revisit them. And set time frames, so that way it gives you something to work towards. So, I mean, that's all I really have to say about that. I would just say grind and just be consistent.